Some facts about Parkinson's disease. Parkinson's disease is a degenerative disorder with no known cure. But now it is possible to fight against the progression of the disease than ever before. What happens in the brain of a person with Parkinson's? There's a very small part of the brain, substantia nigra, less than half an inch, and it makes a chemical called dopamine. Substantia nigra degenerates over time, sometimes over many years or decades. Before people present with symptoms, they lose the ability to make the neurotransmitter called dopamine. It's not 100% sure of all the functions of dopamine, but we know that it controls movement. Why do people with Parkinson's disease start to lose dopamine? Many epidemiologic studies are currently underway that are studying why these brain cells die off. Head trauma is one of the main causes. Others are exposure to pesticides, herbicides, and or heavy metals. If you suspect Parkinson's disease at what point you should see a neurologist? People should think about seeing a neurologist if they notice a cluster of symptoms. If they are having trouble using their hands. If they notice changes in their balance or walking. If a person is experiencing tremor or stiffness only on one side of the body. How fast does Parkinson's disease progress? One of the challenges of Parkinson's disease is how quickly or slowly it progresses. Parkinson's is a different disease in each person. Some people with Parkinson's disease progress faster than others. In general progression takes years or even decades. Usually people have experienced symptoms for a year or two before they get diagnosed. There are specific forms of the disease that may progress more quickly. Signs or early indicators of Parkinson's disease. There are premotor symptoms that can show up years before any type of tremor appears. They are loss of smell, constipation, depression, and anxiety. Many people can live and even live well with Parkinson's disease for many decades. Can anything be done to stall the progression of symptoms? Exercising regularly and vigorously may lessen or stall symptoms but not the progression of the disease. Exercise regularly in order to build up the strength, balance, and endurance because they need it later. Why is exercise so important? Exercise is not only good physically, but mentally too. Research shows that people with Parkinson's who are in good health score better on cognitive and muscle control tests. What about mental exercising? Regular cognitive exercise like doing crossword puzzles, math problems, reading challenging novels, socializing, and interacting with friends and debating and discussing ideas is already showing promise in many studies that focus on decreasing a person's risk for degenerative neurological disease, including Parkinson's disease. How is Parkinson's disease treated? We actually have a lot of options to treat Parkinson's disease. Unfortunately, there's no way to slow down the progression of the disease right now. We are essentially treating the symptoms of the disease right now. Most of that treatment is focused around replacing dopamine with levodopa or L-dopa. There are many medications that mimic the actions of dopamine or make the action of existing dopamine more efficient. What about brain surgery? In the early stages of Parkinson's disease, patients often respond well to medication. So brain surgery would be an unnecessary risk. In the middle stages, medications continue to be helpful but patients can suffer from motor fluctuations and dyskinesia. Deep brain stimulation DBS, can improve tremor, muscle stiffness, slow movements and many walking problems with fewer fluctuations and dyskinesia, this therapy is best suited for patients in the middle stages. Who is a good candidate for deep brain stimulation? Those Parkinson's disease patients who do not have significant cognitive or psychiatric problems. Those have motor fluctuations and tremors that do not respond well to medications. Deep brain stimulation can improve levodopa response symptoms, dyskinesia, and tremor, benefits seem to be long-lasting in many areas of the brain. What are the risks of deep brain stimulation? Besides the obvious risks of any surgery, such as bleeding or infection, 
a small number of patients who undergo deep brain stimulation may experience increased depression, apathy, impulsivity, worsen verbal fluency, and executive dysfunction n. What about deep brain stimulation treatment for late-stage Parkinson's? In later stages of Parkinson's disease, patients may develop symptoms that will not respond to deep brain stimulation, such as cognitive problems, imbalance, or problems with the autonomic nervous system. Thank you.